Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm unofficially announcing Micro Contrast for Affinity Photo. It's a hidden function in the software and I will show you how to use that today. Let's go. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also my Patreon supporters get a bonus part of this tutorial where I show you some additional secret sauce and tricks that you can do with this filter. Another announcement is that I'm soon starting a series on the Nick Collection Color Effects Pro. I'm going through all the filters, show you some secret sauce and what all the settings are about. This is going to be really amazing because you can do some magical things with that filter plugin. And I'm going back to my weekly live streams because personally I'm really missing them. I know a lot of you don't have the chance to watch them live, but if you can really do because it's a lot of fun and you can live chat with me, ask me questions, we can have really cool discussions and I'm sharing a ton of secret sauce while I'm working on art pieces that I'm creating. Okay, let's get started here and we have to go into a little bit of history so you understand better what is going on. Now, when you think about contrast, what that actually is, is when you use here the contrast adjustment, this is adjusting the overall contrast of the image, not the finer details of the contrast. So there is the big difference between micro contrast, which is a contrast that works around the finer detail edges and normal contrast, which is a contrast applied to all of the image in a wider range. So let's delete this here. And if you're an old school user, you will know this trick as a sharpening trick. Now, what does sharpening have to do with contrast? Actually, sharpening is edge finding and then applying contrast to these edges. The image is not really getting sharper. It just looks sharper because the contrast on the edges is more pronounced. So here is this old school trick. You go down here to live filters and you're using high pass and everything turns gray first. And then you have here the radius. And when you turn this up, you can see that slowly the details, the finer details from the background are pushing through. And when you push this too far, you also get some colors shining through. Now, if you push it that far and you don't want to have these colors, there's actually a monochrome option here. When you click on that, everything turns back into gray values. Now, first of all, you probably have already seen this filter here from our filter up here, frequency separation, because this is also using a high pass filter. Also, another way to understand this is when I turn up the radius here, what you see is, we start out with a medium gray and then we get areas that are brighter and darker than that medium gray. And afterwards, we're going to use a blend mode. So if you have seen me before doing a dodge and burn trick, this is exactly that. Because I'm using a pixel layer, I'm using a brush and then I'm painting different gray values onto that layer and blending it with the image below to make parts of the image darker or brighter. The only difference here is that the high pass filter is searching for these details for us and then applying that dodge and burn to the image. So that is basically creating our micro contrast. So what we're doing here is you can go down here to these blend modes, soft light, creates a very soft application of that filter. So you can see when I move the slider here around, I'm getting more or less details and a little bit more or less contrast in here. So the image looks a little bit sharper, but also it has contrast in the finer parts. And soft light is the softest application of that. The next step would be overlay. It's a little bit more intense as you can see here. And then you also have hard light, which is even harder than that. So this is kind of the hardest way. And also this is when you do sharpening with that filter. These are the three blend modes you would use for that. Now, I want to invite you to experiment also with the other blend modes here, like vivid light, as you can see here, when you look down on the stone, 
this is changing the stone. Look at that. Let's zoom out here a little bit, go over here. So let's go over here to Vivid Light and you can see here I get some really interesting, nice micro contrast effects on that stone. So that's interesting. Also with linear light, you can have some of these effects. It's too harsh for the cat hair. If you look in that area here and I go to linear light, you can see that this creates kind of ugly edges, two bright edges around that. So this is not good for this effect, but on the stone, it kind of looks good. So that could be interesting. A pin light has kind of a strange effect and hard mix is not really usable unless you want to get really funky with that. But what you can do here is to play around with these. Let's go for vivid light here and adjust this to a way that we like, let's say so. And I'm just looking at the stone right now because I want to show you a really interesting trick here. When you say, I want to apply this, but only to the stone, and then I want to apply a different setting to the cat, you can do this because in Affinity Photo, all of the live filters and all of the adjustment layers have a built-in mask. So do this with the normal adjustment here with the normal live filter until you like what you're seeing. And then you go here, select that live filter layer, go to layer, invert. So this layer is invisible at that point. And then simply use your paintbrush and go here and set it to white as a color. And you can see wherever I'm painting with that, the effect is going to be applied. So I can simply now paint this. You can see here just on the stone, not on the cat. And just like that, I can apply a micro contrast to that stone. And then if I want to, I can apply a different micro contrast to the cat. So you can see if I turn this now on and off, this is only applied to the stone, not applied to the cat. So that means now I can go in here, live filter, high pass. I can create another version here. Let's say this time I want to go with soft light and I want to have a soft adjustment here on the fur. So I do it like this. Again, I go to layer, invert, take my paintbrush, and now I can paint this onto the cat over here. So just like that, you can see, let's just do it in this area. When I turn this on and off, this is now just on the cat, not on the stone. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that trick. And like I said, my Patreon supporters get a bonus video on this. See you soon and thank you for watching. If you like these videos, maybe subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell button so you get notified on new videos. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye.